What's up guys, hey King here, back to bring you another reaction to this one, to the uh, Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker, the special uh, look at the movie trailer, whatever it's called, it's, it's a trailer technically speaking, uh, but yeah, I've already seen this a few times, and this is me reacting to it just because, you know, it's been a while, and usually I react to all the Star Wars trailers that come out, so yeah, and it's, you know, it's cool, so... Here's my emotional look at it, and plus I want to discuss spoilers that have come out from this movie as well, so we'll see. Anyway, here we go. I love the music. The music's just great, like, you can tell John William worked on the theme for this trailer, like, it's great. New Hope, Leia, Han, C-3PO, R2, the Death Star. The Empire Strikes Back, Vader, Boba Fett. I love you, I know. <laughs> Yoked. Return of the Jedi. We've passed on all we know. Darth Maul, oh god. I, ho I hope they do a sequel to Solo with him. A thousand bridge, to bridge the gaps between uh, Rebel, Solo and Rebels. Revenge of the Sith. Force Awakens. But this is your fight. Last Jedi. I, I need to rewatch all of these movies again before Nine comes out. I just love the music and this is this is also shot these two. Comes to an end. Your journey. Your journey. Yeah, this part. race for you. Oh man. That was a good that's 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 a, that's such a good trailer, like just the just the vibes and the emotion it gives off. Like I feel sorry for people who don't like Star Wars. Like I really do. Like there's literally people I've got friends who I've got a lot of friends who love Star Wars and then I've got that one or two friend who who aren't that big of fans and I've tried to get them into it and they they just don't like it. And it just it pisses me off like to to no tomorrow like like it 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 confuses the shit out of me that they can love Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter for example, but they can't like Star Wars like they can't get into it like it, it's just ridiculous like without Star Wars you wouldn't have a lot of the movies that we have like you gotta thank Star Wars for a lot of the kick ass movies we have now especially like the Marvel movies and that like I, I know it probably sounds like I'm I'm saying a lot of bullshit but honestly Star Wars. Without Star Wars, you wouldn't have a lot of those films. Like a lot of directors were inspired by Star Wars into becoming filmmakers and make those making those kind of films. Like, so yeah, man. I mean, Star Wars was one of the reasons why I wanted to get into film and that. So yeah, like it's, it's just it's just a great story. Even 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 despite its flaws and that, I still love it. Like. Like, that's one of the biggest problems with Star Wars, people, it, it feels like the majority of the fan base just loves to hate on it, like, Star Wars is this thing that you just have to hate, like, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to be like that anymore, like, I, I, I sort of, I do enjoy the prequels for the most part, but, um, my favourite one is Revenge, like, Revenge of the Sith is probably my favourite Star Wars movie next to the original, I'm not a big fan of Empire, like, don't get me wrong, I think Empire is cool, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of it, I love Return, and, but, well, after a few years, uh, when I sort of look back on it, it's like, mm, it's it's not that good, actually. Like, the beginning and the middle are just sort of, meh. Uh, really, the ending is the only thing it's got going for it. Uh, that's that's really mainly the uh, space battle and the stuff with the Emperor and Vader and Luke on the Death Star. Like, the Ewok stuff is just, like, really, like, it's not badly done, but it's it's, it's bloody teddy bears, man, fighting, fighting the Empire. Like, it should have been, been Wookiees on Kashyyyk as originally planned. Like, you could have done so much 
by having to be the Wookiees, and you could have developed Chewbacca's character as well by having him, by having the story take place there. Like, like, oh man, they, it's such wasted potential, really, because it's freaking Ewoks. Like, come on. And episode se episode seven, I liked it. Like, uh, for me, my biggest problem with episode seven is that the action is just sort of really slow. Like, it's really slow. Like, compare the action. It Force Awakens to the action scenes that we have in like uh, the the uh, JJ Abrams Star Trek and Into Darkness and like it just feels a lot more faster paced compared to the slowness that we have in in Force Awakens. Seriously, like the action just isn't that well made in my opinion. Like it doesn't get me excited. Like the best sequence in that film is the Millennium Falcon sequence. Really, like that's that's as high as the film gets when it comes to action sequences. And the rest of the movie just sort of the windows if that makes sense like so it's just it doesn't compare and Lost Jedi like Lost Jedi in terms of action I thought was great but like it's just the story man like I think the biggest problem with that film really in my opinion to this day is it's always going to be uh, the character of Holder like she was completely unnecessary and Finn and Rose's subplot like that could have been trimmed you could have done it differently compared to what they did with it in the end like None of that, none of that casino blight crap had needed to be in there. Like the DJ character didn't need to be in there. Like they could have just changed that up and done it differently. But everything with Luke, Kylo Ren, and Ray, I like that. I thought that was all cool. But yeah, man, I can't wait for Episode Nine to come out. I've already been reading leaks for the movie. Uh, I read one in particular that goes into heavy depth in terms of how Act One is gonna be like. So you know, if you don't want spoilers, guys. Pretty much stop watching the video now, but yeah, um, episode nine apparently starts with uh, seriously. If you if you're still watching, and you don't want spoilers, like go away. <laughs> you still here? Cool. Ready? Okay. So apparently, episode nine starts with a flashback to uh, a young Luke and Leia having a lightsaber fight, like they're training basically. And Leia basically tells Luke that she's pregnant with Ben and that she's gonna have to quit her Jedi training. And then this cuts to, this fast forwards to the future, to the present time, where Rey is training with Leia now, and Leia's basically her master. So it's going to be interesting to see how they take the footage that they had of her from episodes 7 and 8, or what remained, obviously, that they didn't use and incorporate into the movie, that it, that it makes it look new and fresh. But yeah, basically Leia's now the Jedi Master, and she's training Rey. And Rey basically isn't a, a mental kind of person, she's more of a physical person, so apparently she asks to do an obstacle course of sorts instead, instead of doing the whole mental, spiritual kind of thing. She's not really like that, if that makes sense. Uh, I think the best comparisons would be similar to like uh, the uh, to the Avatar cartoon series, where Aang, for example, was a very spiritual avatar, and Korra, for example, is more of a physical kind of avatar, so it's kind of it's similar to that. And then the movie apparently then t cuts to Kylo Ren looking for, uh, he, he's, he's basically trying to find out where Snoke's power came from, or where he got his info, where he got his, uh, where he amassed, I think, all his wealth or power from. And this leads him to this planet, uh, to that red uh, lit planet, I think, where, he, where they basically invaded and uh, Kylo Ren meets this oracle there who gives him the Wayfinder, this MacGuffin, which belonged to Darth Vader, and he uses it to travel to this planet which is made out of a uh, black rock and he he goes underground and he finds an old weak ass Darth Sidious uh, Palpatine basically who is alive and pretty much reveals that he survived his fall from in the Death Star 2 which is ridiculous if that part's true I mean Carl in the leak apparently Ren even calls bullshit on that and doesn't believe him and there's another leak that says that, that that it's actually Matt Smith's character who's with it and sort of dying. But like here, it's meant to be Palpatine, and he basically explains that uh, Ben and Ray are basically this thing called the Force Stewards or something, which is the Force basically creating two powerful opposites in the light and dark side of the Force in order to balance things out. And Palpatine wants Ben and uh, Ray to become his. Emperor, emperor and empress of his new empire and he wants them he wants Ben to bring Rey to him so that he can turn her to the dark side and so he can make them his heirs and uh, the, the Dites of Ren obviously they're, they're the ones who come out of the other regions I think and tell Ren this so I don't know how they really factor into this but then this leads to a uh, it's very confusing. This leads to this leads to a forced vision, I think, of sorts between because they still have that Ray and Ben still have that connection, 
and uh, yeah, obviously the resistance, they're having trouble uh, finding help on that and getting other people on their side and they don't know what the New Order's planning but they do have a mole. There's a mole inside the First Order who's giving them information on what's going on. Uh, that mole is obviously revealed to be General Hux who wants to take uh, Kylo Ren down and take over along with General Parade or something who's played by uh, Richard E. Grant's character. So yeah, there's a lot of back and forth, uh, maybe betrayal stuff going on. Uh, the resistance are attacked. They make an escape, and then um, to get more information on on this wayfinder, on what uh, what's going on. Apparently, we also find out that uh, the Emperor is the one who created this uh, this armada, this fleet of star destroyers, which are all fitted with um, star Death Star tech, which can each of the star destroyers can basically be used to destroy a planet. So yeah. Uh, that's uh, that, it's both awesome and it's sort of overdone now, but it's like it kind of it's it's kind of the next step in the evolution of the Death Star, really. Like you know, outfit several instead of having this one big ship that can be attacked and destroyed or whatever, just outfit several ships of one, basically with the tech. So yeah, that kind of makes sense. It's kind of an evolution of that, but it is it is overdone. So <laughs> it's kind of annoying that we we keep getting a Death Star in each movie, but. Um, the only, the only part of this league that sort of pisses me off is the whole thing with uh, the Emperor supposedly surviving his fault, so I hope that's not true. But yeah, uh, apparently um, Leia then has has basically has Rey, Finn, Poe, uh, 3PO and R2 and BB-8 and Chewbacca go on this mission to this planet, which we see with the celebration to find her contact who can tell her about what to do next, and that contact is revealed to be Lando. And Lando reveals that he had uh, a kid, he had a child that ended up getting kidnapped by the First Order while he and Luke were looking for this Sith dagger and uh, he basically left the Resistance because of that. And, you know, he ends up helping them, uh, give them the location of where the dagger is, they head to it and they fall down into the caverns to this secret temple or something where they find the Sith dagger that belonged to this uh, uh, Sith acolyte or something. Uh, let me stop it here. And we're back again. So yeah, we're, we're, we're talking about the uh, Sith, at the Sith Dagger now, right? We're on that part. So yeah, apparently they, they find a Sith Dagger in the tunnels, uh, which 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 they can't read because it's written in Sith language. So they give it to C-3PO and he reveals that he can't read it because, you know, that's a first. Uh, it's, part, it's part of a dialect that is forbidden or is deleted or that you never got. So... Uh, that what one of the big plot points of the story is going to be C three is basically taking C three PO to some place where he can get that uh, Sith language installed into his uh, system so he can read the dagger. But yeah, when they get the dagger, they end up being attacked by this giant worm apparently that built the tunnels and that. And uh, they're about to die. They get cornered. They're about to die. And Ray reveals a new force power, which is healing because she realizes that the worm is injured. And she, it's it's sort of like the line of the mouse, basically, when it removed the force. So it's kind of Rain using her healing powers to heal the worm or the creature, and it and it doesn't attack them anymore. It, like it's it's comforted, and it leaves. And uh, that's in, in video games and Star Wars video games. We've we've always like you've always had uh, you know there's always been that force power ability to heal. So that's uh it, it's not new when it comes to the games, but it's definitely new when it comes to the films because we've never had a character with the ability to heal. Uh, like things, so that's definitely new. It's definitely new force power when it comes to the to the film's mythology because we've never seen it in anything else. I think so. That's definitely new there, and they they heal, and then they they, they escape the tunnels. I think they regroup with Lando, and obviously he wants nothing to do with it. He just tells them how things are, and he leaves them. And then Ray has another force uh, vision or force moment with Kylo Ren. Uh, she gets like a necklace, I think, and uh, Kylo Ren takes the necklace from her during the force vision, and he realizes where they are, what planet they are. So he leads, he goes there with the Knights of Ren, and they attack the characters. Uh, the Millennium Falcon gets uh, hijacked by Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren, so that gets that that basically gets taken by the First Order. So it goes to him, and um, Ray. We've seen it in the trailer, in the first trailer, when she avoids the TIE fight. That's basically the first lightsaber fight between Rey and Kylo Ren, so they confront each other in the fighting. And meanwhile, you've got the other characters like Finn, Chewbacca, uh, Poe, C-3PO, R2, and uh, what's his name? Um, BB-8. And there's another character as well, because when they're in the tunnels, the way they find the dagger is basically uh, it belongs to this dude, the Acolyte, and he's located in, in a crashed Sith ship. And this is actually very important, because when they find the ship, uh, which is buried on the ground, 
Ray recognizes it as the ship that she saw leaving Jakku, you know, when when she when she when we had that flashback in episode 7. So, what's going on there? Like this is supposedly the ship that our parents left on. This is the ship that brought her to Jakku. So, what's it doing here? So, and back again. Uh where where did I leave off? Um that's right, spoilers for episode 9 apparently. Again, if you've gotten this far and you want to avoid more, leave now. But uh, So yeah, where did, I, where did I leave off last time? Um, they fall in the cave. Right, the ship. They, they discover the dagger inside a ship, a Sif, a sh a Sif ship or something. And it's the ship that apparently left Rey on Jakku. And she wonders about it and how what the connection there is. Uh, the Knights of Ren attack, obviously Ray and Ren are fighting, and the Knights of Ren are fighting uh, Poe, Finn, and the others as they're trying to escape. Uh, they find that a circular new droid character who's located inside the ship, uh, called Dio, I think. So he ends up joining them, they make an escape, uh, and then of course something happens which uh, involves Chewbacca because he ends up being given the dagger, and apparently he takes the dagger and then he ends up getting captured and he gets taken on to a prisoner ship that's taking off and Ray Ray tries to use the force to bring the ship back down Kylo Ren instead uses the force to try and put it back in the air and we basically get a similar situation with Luke's lightsaber in The Last Jedi where both of them are sort of pulling at the same object and then something unexpected happens which is Ray using activating and using force lightning for the first time which ends up basically this you know causing a short circuit on the ship and destroying it and killing everyone on board so yeah at this point it's like you know she's horrified and apparently Chewbacca and everyone else on board is dead but we know from the trailers that he's alive he's with Lando obviously and he ends up with them in the location where the Death Star 2 is located so obviously at some point his death is definitely going to be a fake cut you know we assume he's dead but he's not and this would probably explain how C-3PO ends up wearing uh, his uh, belt uh, his um, you know that uh, thing he wears and he has his uh, crossbow so obviously Chewbacca ends up going missing as it were but I assume it involves Lando saving him and obviously Kylo Ren probably ends up most obviously likely takes the Millennium Falcon and obviously the, you know the characters I don't know how it happens I don't know how Rey's gonna end up escaping but obviously she does end up escaping somehow and that's pretty much the end of the first act apparently so we don't know what happens in act two but uh, apparently, you know, um, Poe, when, when they're trying to examine the blade and they can't get anywhere with the language, Poe says that he has a contact that they can they, they can contact, that they can uh, find to help them. And I'm assuming Poe's contact is going to be revealed to be Kerry Russell's character who plays a bounty hunter. So I'm thinking that's how it ties in maybe with her. And that's going to lead them to go to this place where they're going to reprogram c 3 Pilot and put the Sith language in him in order for them to read what the dagger says but yeah I don't know I don't know how everything else comes into place I don't know how uh, Jenon's character you know the new the new chick I don't know how she comes into play and the big twist might be that she's going to end up being revealed as Lando's missing child properly you know but we, we I assume we're meant to think it's Finn but then the big twist is going to be, no, he lost a daughter, not a son, so it's going to be end up being her. But then I've heard rumours uh, that say that she's actually Finn's lost sister, that she was taken at the same time as Finn was, but she ended up escaping from the uh, First Order and, uh, yeah, has been fighting back against them. So I don't know I don't know which is true, how it all ties back together, but we'll, we'll see. We'll end up seeing how it happens. And then as for Palpatine, another leak suggested that um, when when Ben and Ray are basically uh, being confronted by him he's he's trying to basically use the force life the life force to basically bring himself back or to use Ray's healing power and Ren's energy to sort of bring himself back to his full power maybe because that's Ren uh, to uh, Kylo basically I don't know how it all works I don't know how Matt Smith fits into this though apparently if, if, if that leak is true then Matt Smith is uh, an acolyte who, re who's, who, who reveals that a Palpatine spirit lives inside the uh, black rocks or something or in the ring that uh, Snoke needs to wear and he takes that ring and Palpatine ends up forming around him basically so think of think of like uh, I don't know if you guys uh, read Naruto 
but uh, something happens with the main villain in that show where he gets possessed by another character and he ends up uh, forming into this uh, into the final villain of the movie. So maybe it's something like that. If that leak is to be believed, I don't know. But uh, yeah, um, more information apparently is going to come out soon. I'll probably do another version of this leak again once the final trailer comes out, which is supposed to be in October. So next month, we got next month to go. I can't wait to see that final trailer to see how much of this stuff is legit because. It should be. I think with, with the amount of information we know now, we now know if it is legit that final trailer is going to give us a clue or not. So we got that to look forward to. Anyway, guys, that's my reaction and spoilers for this movie, or as much as I could claim. Uh, again, you know, this is info from other people, so do give those guys credit and not me because I'm just reading what they've said. So give credit to those where it's due because um, they know a lot more than I do. Uh, and they're probably definitely legit, um, but at the same time, you know, it sounds too good to be true because I'm kind of happy with the way the plot sounds. So, except for the whole Papoutine pa surviving the Death Star, like, it's just, I don't understand how that works. Like, if he's not a spirit, then I don't get it. You know, they, they have to pull some big bullshit to make us believe he survived that fall, right? And that explosion. But, um, yeah, um, I guess that's what comics coming into in, in, in it, so they'll probably explain it in that. But yeah, I can't wait, and as always guys, like, subscribe, whatever, and I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care, and bye.